I put your favorite rapper to the test. Hit the rep with a chair. I'm still cooking like a chef. You can smell death in the air. Wildin' out for the fans. Throw more weapons in here. Scream woo loud as I can. No one effing with flair. Diamond Dallas, nigga. I put your favorite rapper to the test. Hit the rep with a chair. I'm still cooking like a chef. You can smell death in the air. Wildin' out for the fans. Throw more weapons in here. Scream woo loud as I can. No one effing with flair. I place a razor blade on my own flesh till it tear. Yeah, the baby do back. You niggas scared. That's the mission, whole rap. That all you whack niggas fear. Audio dope. Got you smoking crack with your ears. Break the pyrex. High tech words. Superb dialect. Curb haters and Enthusiasm, who wanna try next? When you start overproducing, fans by less. God bless me, now we can do it big as a 5X. Diamonds and gold, keep pushing fly legs on Jefferson Road. Paid in full, now what car you trying to buy next? Penny for your thoughts, I got a million dollar mindset. Back to back drops, he might need a spine check. Dallas shooting like he Jason Tatum with the side step. Toe heavy arms, big as Scott sign a bicep. Feeling on the mic, I plot terroristic concepts. Anytime you say my name, they treat it like a bomb threat. Sold out everything, articles and complex. I ain't trying to flex, I'm just keeping it real. Man poking out the back, it's hard to keep it concealed. Cold exposing niggas' soul and all the secrets revealed. Used to be an ordinary rapper deep in the field. Now it feel like every other week he ain't in the deal. In the court of public opinion, niggas seeking the pills. I get a rush when I see your blood leaking and spill. Stack the money till it can't fall. Five Cuban links, that's a bankroll. Rock a mink even when it ain't cold. Gold bottle, gold chains, custom made clothes. Stack the money till it can't fall. Five Cuban links, that's a bankroll. Rock a mink even when it ain't cold. Gold bottle, gold chain, custom made clothes. Fly shit. I used to be scared to buy shit. That new ride sitting outside. Yeah, that's my shit. That nine six notorious big, ready to die shit. Got me out of Bangkok, getting high with a tie shit. The rhymes that I comprise is like a crime flick. Life is like a Iron Man match. I'm watching time tick. On the microphone, I'm going dumber than a blind chick. I got the bars on lock. I'm like a convict and every line spit. It's 23 and 1. Most rappers staying underground and never see the sun. Disconnect you from the matrix just for thinking he the one. So if you thinking this records, you will probably need a gun. Fair warning. No more warning shots with flare on them. Your favorite rapper couldn't touch a golden hair on them. My vision clairvoyant. It's real sights for precision when I point at nature, boy. I wouldn't toy with the distance. Take, taste my own blood and enjoy it. Demolition man. Anything you build, I destroy it. Deploy troops or some real Trojan the Troy shit. Let me take you on another fantastic voyage. What the Stack the money till it can't fall. Five Cuban links, that's a bankroll. Rock a mink even when it ain't cold. Gold bottle, gold chains, custom made clothes. Stack the money till it can't fall. Five Cuban links, that's a bankroll. Rock a mink even when it ain't cold. Gold bottle, gold chain, custom made clothes. That's us. And that's Rick Blur. Leave the pack. You like it? Custom made. This right here. Hey, what's up, y'all? Man, it's your homeboy, whatever, man. Just coming at you again with another episode of Karate in the Garage, man. I'm out here chilling on this beautiful Sunday evening here in Columbus, Ohio. It's currently 80 degrees. It's hot. Um, It was 90 degrees earlier, so, you know, I guess it's cooling down a little bit. But nonetheless, it's hot, it's humid, but we out here. You feel me? So, uh, it's funny because... uh. I completely intended to play a different song. Not that you can go wrong with Mickey Diamond, but somehow I saved the wrong song. Uh, but Custom Made is still one of my favorites. Oh, I see what I did. <laughs> so I'll play the song I intended to play at the end. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, man, what's good, man? What's up with y'all, man? I'm just, you know, I'm just chilling, doing my thing, man. I'm out here chilling, smoking a Drew, uh, Drew Estate Java Mint cigar um great smoke i do have a review on it out there so sift through my videos i need to set them up in playlists 
So the people that are here for the cars, people that are here for the cigars, people that show up just for karate in the garage, I love you, but I need to, uh, you know, organize a little bit better, make it easier for you to find the content that you want to hear, you know? So, um, yeah, man. So like I said, man, I'm just chilling. Um, we living in wild times, y'all. I don't know if you've seen the little short that I posted. Uh, what was it last week? Um, but we are living in wild times. <laughs> Let's talk about it, right? Uh, now, there's several reasons that you could say it's wild out here, and it might not even be one of the reasons that I'm covering because there's more reasons that you can say is wild out here than just a couple reasons that I'm about to cover. However, we live in wild times, man. We live in a time where a man literally may pull a gun out of a purse and shoot somebody. He might shoot up the block. You know, uh, even the gangsters, man, is, is different. There's still some good, uh, we're well, not good, but there's still some typical OG style gangsters that we grew up with. But, and I don't know if you want to label these guys gangsters. I can't really label somebody who's walking around with a purse a gangster, but there's some people out here who don't have any regard for anybody else or anybody else's life that will pull a gun out of a purse. Like they, you know, they, they nuts. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, they, they used to have the man bag thing. What was it called, man? When I was a kid, uh, they had the guys rolling around with pouch. Remember the pouch? Not the one, not the fanny pack to go around your waist, but it was the pouch. You know, I mean, it was a nice little bag to carry around, I guess, but, you know, um, I don't even remember how old I was. This was probably late 80s. Uh, the pouch. <laughs> um, which didn't last very long. People don't carry pouches today, but, you know, they're, they're, they're the man bag purse thing, you know. And, hey, if that's your thing, that's your thing. It's, it's not me, man. Like, sometimes I feel weird with a book bag. It's not a purse, but. I guess what what would make me feel weird about having a book bag is what's inside of it. <laughs> when you just got more than a few items, you know, uh, it kind of turns into a man purse. You feel me? It just it just does. It's just it's just under the disguise of a book bag. Uh, but anyway, man, you know, you got the the men running around with purses, wild, you know, uh, and and some of them are. I guess you could say are fashionable and some of them are straight up purses. Fashion, man. Fat, it's, just, it's just fashion is wild, man. You know, they sell skinny everything. I'm trying to school shop for my son. Um, and uh, every pair of jeans I'm looking at, skinny, slim fit, skinny, skinny stretch, slim stretch. Like what? Like, are these like, they're like tight jeans that stretch to form fit your body? So what are they? Basically, leggings for men just made out of jean material? Like, but that's what that's what these youngins is wearing. Like, uh, I miss the days of baggy and carpenter style jeans, which there's still a few that are still for sale, especially carpenter. But they ain't like they was when we was doing them, you know, or wearing them. Um, they're still slim. They just might have an extra pocket or two or something like that. Or they got the little, uh, I can't even describe it. It's almost like a little loop that's on the leg. I don't know what you're supposed to put in there. I think these the, the carpenters carry like hammers in there. They put the hammer in there and it catches the hammer. But, uh, man, my purses, skinny jeans, skinny suits. Then they sell in the suits to the younger generation where, they sit down and they hold like it, you know, they they almost ride all the way up to their knee. You know, like fashion is just different. And then they wear their dress shoes with no socks, apparently. At least that's what it looks like. Um (sighs) 
you know, I'm looking. Um, I go to buy a shirt. Man, I go try this shirt on, man. You know, it's like a 3X, but it fits like a medium. I'm like, man, who's walking around these little tight-ass shirts, man? But then you see them. You go, go to the store, whatever, walk around, man. You see them. And they out here. So the fashion is different, man. I mean, I don't know. As a man, the only people you would see in, in tight stuff was like basically like bodybuilders. And they would be, you know, at like a, a competition or what have you uh, dressed like that. But even in like some of the shirts they would wear, like they they still was baggy. They wasn't like, you know, it's, but now like it's just the everybody thing. I mean, I don't even know who started. Where, who, when we were younger, you know, and keep in mind, I was born in 1980, you know, so I'm 43, about to be 44. I'm just trying to think, man, who was walking around in tight stuff like that? Because it existed. Not on the level, though. I mean, it wasn't no skinny jeans or nothing like that. When we was young, but, um, you know, it's like they forcing it on you, man. Like, and when it comes to women, man, everything is sexualized from their clothes to their body. Um, but let's talk about it, man. Women, women wear anything. They're literally wearing anything out here. Let's start with, I got my little freedom bourbon over here. I mean, I got this bottle. I, I, you know, I'm one of them people like, I don't have a whole lot of liquor that I keep on hand. So Whatever bottle I buy, I'll just drink it until it runs out or whatever. This is the one that I want at the gun show. Pretty good, but it ain't any better than anything else. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this stuff, man, they all taste the same. I just be wondering if they be relabeled. But, you know, you'll get one of them groups. Oh, man, this is a great pour. You know, like, man, whatever, man. It's, it's some bourbon. You know, now, if you come to me and we talking like some Uncle Nearest or something like that, you know, then it's not just some whiskey. It's not just some bourbon. You know, now now we're talking something a little bit different, man. Salute to Uncle Nears, but also salute to the Freedom uh, bourbon that I am drinking. It's a veteran-owned company here in Ohio. Um, so it's still good, but, you know, like I said, I mean, I got my opinion. It's good. Would I drink it again? Yes. Uh, do I rate it highly over others? No, but... Um, it's definitely not bottom of the barrel. It's it's some good stuff. Salute, Freedom Park. Women will wear anything, man. They'll come out the house at anything. And when I say anything, I mean anything. <sighs> what makes me the what 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 pisses me off the most, right? What pisses me off the most is the bonnets. In the pajamas. Adult women in the store. You know what I'm saying? You take your kids to school. You pull up. You got the bonnet on. Something happened. You hop out the car. You got the pajamas or your nightgown on. You take them to the bus stop in your nightgown. Like, no overcoat. I'm like, titties just. You know what I'm saying? Like, man. We got to do better, right? I say it all the time that we got to do better. You know, because you get to see in that, like, okay, you came out in your nightgown, you came out in your, your pajama pants, um, you got your bonnet on. Did you brush your teeth? Did you wash your face? Did you put on deodorant? Did you put on any drawers? Or you just got up and just rolled out? You know what I'm saying? Like, rolled out of bed, hopped in the car, and went and handled whatever business you were trying to handle. And it's embarrassing when you take your kids to school and, you know, it'd be the ones that want to be all loud. They yelling out the window. They got their head out the window, you know, bonnet on, looking like, looking like hell. Like, you know what I'm saying? Embarrassing your kids or something happened, you know, like I'll go and uh, say my son forget his lunch or something like that. I go to drop off his lunch. It's always one standing in the office in their pajamas and they bonnet on raising hell. It's always one. <laughs> um, but you know, that's one of the things. Um, 
see-through clothes. Nobody conceals anything anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can see bras, you can see panties. Um, some of them ain't got nothing on underneath, you know. Um, but they out in public like that. You know, they got they wear the tight leggings where you can literally see skin through them, or you see draws, or you might see cheeks if they got on a thong or something like that. But still, like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you were trying to catch a man or whatever for some other reason than you simply, you know, just looking for somebody to bang or whatever, like, yeah, that might bring you attention, but is that bringing you the right type of attention? Because me as a man, like, you know, you can be beautiful. You don't have to, you don't have to dress like that, you know, where you show everything, all this, that, and the other, but what you going to track when you out there like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, and then, you know, everybody want to complain about the type of people um, that they dealing with or or what have you, you know what I'm saying, the type of men they find or what have you. Uh, but think about how you contribute to who you find, where you find them, what you're portraying, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't want my wife walking around like that. I wouldn't want my girlfriend walking around like that. I wouldn't want my daughter walking around like that. I wouldn't want my nieces rock, walking around like that. You know, and what example are you setting for your kids? Because a lot of them be out like that with their kids. Mm-hmm. Um, when did a brawl become a top? You be walking around in their brawls and shit. Like, like excuse me, like, What's what did they say? Nothing sacred anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when did a brawl become a top? And you probably see that more anywhere than when you go to uh, like a like a a bar or a club or what have you. You know, you see people post their club and pictures, and they legit went out the house with a brawl. Nothing else covering their upper body. Just a brawl. And nine times out of ten, they probably got a see through skirt on where you can see they they draws or. Uh, this new phenomenon, right, where your shorts or your skirt show your cheeks, and we ain't talking about just like the 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 edge of the cheek or whatever. Like people walking around with half their butt cheek out. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> on the regular, like it's it's becoming a fashion trend, right? To just expose yourself. It's wild, man, because uh, man. Growing up, 80s, 90s, even early 2000s, man, like, I wasn't seeing all that, man. People wasn't walking around in their undergarments. Uh, you know, you might see, uh, you might be able to tell, you know, a chick got on some tight shorts or whatever or tight uh, leggings, you know, that's the thing. Um, which, you know, I mean, Technically, a lot of them you can't see through, but some of y'all still showing too much because you shouldn't have on the leggings um, at times. But anyway, I mean, that's not the worst. But anyway, I mean, when did you used to see that? You know what I'm saying? Like, at, at best, you might be able to tell whether a chick had on, uh, like, the granny panties or a thong. But you couldn't see it. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, if it was if she was wearing, like, white, you know, you might see the black underneath or something like that and you'd be able to tell but aside from that like you know i mean it's just uh it's just the norm now you know and 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 again it, it wouldn't necessarily i mean you don't want anyone i guess it's not great for anyone to be doing it but you know it's not just adults man it's kids man it's kids we was at uh my son's baseball game and there was a teenage girl, man. I mean, she was probably like 11 or 12. I don't I don't think she was any older than that. And she had on some shorts with half her cheeks out. And she was there with her parents, or at least with her mom, which makes it even worse. You know what I'm saying? You there with your mom. So your mom is okay with this young girl walking around with half her cheeks out at a baseball game. You know, so you you in a public place. Um, you got all kinds of, you know, boys running around, you got creepy old men, 
you know, out there. I mean, you know, old men, dirty old men, like some of them will just look at anything. You know, there's all this uh, child pornography and stuff that goes on. And, you know, so there's creeps, there's sickos, there's weirdos out there. I guarantee you somebody at the field was staring at this little girl's cheeks. Like, it's just sad, man. And And for the mom to be there, and it's acceptable that you let her come out the house like that. And she's there with you and she's standing at the fence, you know, where if anybody is watching the game, you got to scan the field. You know what I'm saying? They might be at home plate, hit the ball. It's in the outfield. At some point, she's in everybody's vision. Like she wasn't sitting down in the bleachers. Like it was just terrible, man. I couldn't believe it. I'm sitting there telling my wife, like, I can't believe she's she's out here like that. And her mom is sitting there raising hell about any and everything else your daughter's out here looking like a like a like a teenage hoe it's the worst generation of parents ever you know which makes things even more wild there's no lead by example there's no correction salute to the real parents that's out there man the ones that care about their kids the ones that uh, portray the right image, the ones that are willing to correct their kids. There's a lot of kids, you know, they parents ain't necessarily bad people, but they don't want to, you know, we live in this age where a parenting where <coughs> people don't want their kids to be mad at them. So they won't correct their kids. Or they're just too lazy to do it. Or some of them just don't care. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's wild, man. It's wild out here. Talking, I get to talking and my stuff go out. Um. Oh, I was that okay. So there's this video I did. I was at the Cor Toy Barn Car Show, and I'm walking around. I'm doing my videos of the cars that I always do. You know, my normal video. And I don't know if she liked me. I don't know. If she was just. She knew she was on camera, and she was just trying to get attention. But every time, you know, I'm walking, I'm talking, you know, I'm moving around, looking at the cars. And there's this big white girl walking in front of me um, with these these uh, shorts on to keep riding up her ass. And like, you know, a good 25 percent of her butt is out. She keeps pulling them down, you know, so it, it, the whole time in my in my video and it, it would piss me off is I would stop, go another way. And then she would end up in front of me again. I'm like, man, what is going on? Like, is she doing it on purpose? But she's walking around, man. and. The whole time she's grabbing her shorts and pulling them back down. Like, why you come out the house like that? You knew better. She up there trying to catch one of the millionaires. But I'm not a millionaire, babe. And I'm married. So, and I don't want somebody that's walking around showing their ass to airbox. So take that on over there. Um wild times, y'all. There's men out here that look like women, legit look like women. And we ain't talking about just dress like women, right? Because we talked about the tight shirts, the tight pants, you know what I'm saying? But there's men out here, uh, nails done, hair done like a woman. The only acceptable woman type hairstyle when I was growing up was men with the really long hair that would sometimes get a perm. And, you know, perm and then to a ponytail. But, you know, when they had the little hairstyle, you know, I mean, that was still a little iffy to me. But it, it for some reason, it was acceptable growing up. But nowadays, man, they got the women hairstyles. They got the colors. They out here dyeing their hair. You know, that uh, uh, bleached blonde type looking color is popular. Um, but I didn't see them blue, purple, pink, green. You know what I'm saying? So they taking it to the extremes. Uh, crop tops, belly shirts, you name it. You know what I'm saying? Um, which, can I go back to women real quick? When, was, when did it become acceptable to be 400 pounds and walk around with your entire stomach out like, not just like, you know, a little sliver down at the bottom, which some people will have a problem with. But you know what? Hey, you know, 
okay, all right, we could tolerate that. You know, your brother like big women, and hey, you might want to see a little bit of stomach, but damn, not the whole beer keg. You know, it just looked like you showed up. I guess there's a there, there maybe there's a uh a, a way you could do it where it look all right, but or where it don't just look sloppy, but you know, some of these people it's like, oh, all I had was a small shirt and with none other my laundry clean, so I'm just gonna wear this out here. I mean, whole gut out, like crazy. But back to these men that look like women, man. So they got the purses, they got the they dressing like women, they wearing the women colors, uh Hair done, nails done. We got the extreme. You know, we got the trannies. We got the women that want to be men. We got the men that want to be women. They out here taking uh, hormones, medicines, getting surgeries, etc. Now, I don't know nothing about this, okay? But what I do know is a woman can take some sort of hormones or pills to transition to a man now i don't know if they literally grow some sort of uh you know some sort of twig down there um but i do know that men can go and get surgery remove their parts and have women parts how does that turn out like is it do you turn into, do they install like the, uh, the rubber coochie that they sell like at, uh, uh, one of the, the, the sex toy stores or something? I mean, how, you know, and, and what's crazy is, uh, as technology gets better, right? As there's all these advances in science and stuff like that, like some of these people you have to take a second look at. Because they legit look like the other sex. There's always been women that, uh, you know, a few masculine women rolling around. Uh, but usually you can still tell they women. But sometimes you're like, eh, is that a man or a woman? But when was it men walking around with boobs and bubble butts? Like women. That look like women. Like, ugh. I feel sorry for the young folk, man. Like, and I, you know, anybody that's in the dating pool, man, like you legit, you know, like it might be offensive to ask, but it's almost like you got to legit verify whether or not somebody is who they say they are. That's wild, man. Wild times. Nobody's body is real. And this probably contributes to the men and the women being able to look like the other sex you got cosmetic surgery you they change their face all around uh hair they do hair you can get fake hair they got you can get hair hair uh implants like what like i got this uh right now i can't even tell on the camera so i got this cyst right here and uh it kills all the the hair in this section of my beard now, if I let my beard grow long enough, it'll kind of cover it up. It might be thin right there, but it wouldn't be like, like, but right now it looked like somebody took a shotgun and shot me in my neck. You know what I'm saying? You can't really tell on the camera, but, uh, so what if I decided, you know, because I got this cyst here, no hair will grow while it's doing whatever it's doing. What if I decided to go and get hair implants? What if they installed the wrong ones? What if they put, I don't know if you can get different types, like for the top of your hair, for, you know, what if they, what happens when uh, the doctor's making a, a mistake and they install like pubic hairs somewhere that they should have installed a different, could you imagine you got your whole beard looking fresh and you got this area of pubes over here, like, ugh. <laughs> uh, but could it happen? I don't know, maybe. Um, like I said, all the cosmetic surgery, uh, you, the BBLs, you know, everybody wants to take all the fat out their stomach and put it in their butt. Like, okay, like, 
I'm not with it, but do some, some of these people look okay? Like, they might look okay, but it's like nobody really plans it out. Most of the people that have a BBL take so much and stuff it into their butt that, you know, they got uh, pencil legs. You know what I'm saying? They got pencil legs with this giant butt. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how well this will show up on camera, but let's just say. Let's just say. You know what I'm saying? But that's them. You know what I'm saying? They they skinny up top. They butt look like that. And then they got these pencil legs. Like, a natural thick woman don't look like that. So everybody knows. Everybody knows, man. Like, because usually when somebody got a big butt, they got big thighs. At least the top part of their thighs. These people, man, like, it was this chick at uh one of my son's baseball games, man. Well, I was just looking like, and the guys was, was, you know, all of them was looking and she had this giant butt, but, uh, she was like, it was obvious. I'm like, who likes that? I don't know. So. And no, I'm not going to get in trouble for that. Me and my wife talked about that, but, uh. Oh, I don't know. Um, like, I see people that go and do this, and who are they doing it for? You know what I'm saying? Um, well, before I go there, what else? What else we got? Because I'm going to tie it all together, right? So they go and they get these fake butts. Okay, so I seen a chick that I seen a couple, and I don't remember if I talked. I feel like I talked about this in a video. Maybe not. But uh, this chick had the way. She had to weigh like 350. She had to. She might have been heavier than that. She had this little waist. And then it was like an artist took it, sculpted it around her hips. You know what I'm saying? For someone that size, it was too perfect of a shape for it to be natural. Right? But then you also know that she took the fat from her stomach and put it in her butt because her butt also looked like that. It was just totally unnatural. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't have, women, y'all don't have to do that, man. And some people do it and they already got a butt. But if you want to lose your stomach, you don't have to put it somewhere else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, just let them suck it out and 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 let it be gone, or or just use a little bit. But at the same time, like everybody wants, everybody's unnatural. There's so many unnatural bodies, you know. Uh, there's always been fake boobs, but to what degree do you get fake boobs? Some people get their fake boobs and. I don't know. I guess they go get ones that are proportional. You can still tell they're fake. Uh, and then, you know, some people go get them and it look like they put two NFL footballs on their chest. And they look ridiculous. Nipples always hard. Like, what your nipples hard for, man? It's 100 degrees out here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's wild. But why do they do this? Who are you trying to make happy? Because I feel like the the women who do it do it for themselves and to get attention because I ain't ever met a man that told me that he wished his wife had a bigger butt. He wished his wife had some big fake boobs. You know what I'm saying? Like, what they would have did is they would have went and in their process of selection, like, okay, so she ain't got the body that you like or a body that you like at all. So might you still want to bang or something like that? Sure. It happens all the time. 
how many people tell you they don't like fat girls but they out here banging fat girls which is another lie y'all need to quit telling i believe more people like big women than skinny women that's what i believe but hey you know that's what i see whether people want to admit it or not but um you know like who are, who are we trying to impress i ain't never seen somebody be like you know uh i think my wife should go get a bbl man because her butt ain't big enough because the majority of women that you see that have it done are single and it seems like a lot of them stay single they might get a lot of attention hey you know their inbox might blow up with that big fake butt and i think uh now maybe this will change in the future you know but the, you know, the bbl stuff at least on the i don't know how new it is but on the scale that it's on right now um you know it seems to be uh still in a in a trial and testing phase so there might be a lot of people hey you know they see it you know you got the instagram models and all that they see this big fake butt and they just want to take it for a test drive you know what i'm saying uh but do they really want that it doesn't seem like it i mean i'm sure some of them find happiness but 99 percent of the bbls that i see walking around i don't see no wedding ring on their hand when you see their social media posts uh you know the the everybody that's single seems to like to use the hashtag single um you know so that i mean that's what i see um does it apply to everybody of course not you know but uh it seems like they do it just for attention um because they're insecure with their body you know the the mental health insecurity thing insecurity is a mental health disorder it really is um because it makes people do wild and crazy things um someone will have a perfectly good pair of boobs and decide they too big and chop them off like <laughs> yeah so i don't know y'all man like like i said man we just living in wild times i really feel for the young people um that are that are coming in today uh teenage years you know where they want to start or, or at least we would have started um you know looking at girls or the, or the young people in college you know that they're looking to have some fun meet you know different men and women possibly meet their life partner um and then you know the the young people just graduated college they established um and now you know they want to start a family find somebody what you dealing with out here is wild bro it's wild women do you walk up to a man with a purse and approach them what do you do when a man with a purse approaches you um guys when you see a chick with a bbl do you just want to hit it or do you want to get the you know do you legit want to get to know the person with this bba what what, what what do you do um when you see the big fake boobs i don't know i you know i don't know who out here likes these big fake boobs you should just see in uh in the beach babes and the and the porn stars but fake boobs are a thing They can't feel like a real boob. Give me natural. Give me natural. You know what I'm saying? But I just want to come through and chop it up real quick, man. Um, wild times we living in. Those were the two things was essentially fashion related, uh, fake body and insecurity related were the things that I wanted to talk about. Um, check me out here, right here on YouTube, man. It's your homeboy, whatever, man. Like, comment, share your comments, share your thoughts. Are you in the BBLs? What are your feelings? I want to know. You know what I'm saying? What are your feelings? Men, share your, your feelings on it. Women, do you want one? Do you have one? Why? You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> Share your, sh someone please come share your uh, opinion on this man purse thing, man. I just can't get with it.
you know, I don't care who makes the bag. I, I'm straight. It's, it's not me. It's not a me thing. Uh, but salute, hey, if that's your thing, salute to you. Like I said, it's your homeboy, whatever, man. Follow me right here on YouTube. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'm going to roll up out this piece. Summertime. Appreciate y'all coming through. You niggas gonna have to apologize to me. Turn me up, Kino. Yo, wise words from a hustler. Don't let no static stop your business. I came too far to fail. No, I can't crash about no niggas. What's sad is y'all won't get it until I'm lashing out with visions. And hey, got Tom and Jerry rappers playing cat and mouse with hitters. No, no, ask how I'm religious. For every half, I vow forgiveness. It's like soul food Sunday, how we pray, gather around them chickens. I know your type, your actions loud, but that come down to senses. When you know the ones who yapping loud to who actually bought they business. Ain't no capping about no killings, talking, chatting around no bitches. No. Take these secrets to the grave. I ain't ratting, I'm not no witness. They want me acting out or backing down, but that just sound ridiculous. I need the crib so big, a Michael Jackson crowd to fill it. Summertime. You know, it's shit more than bitches and jewels. The money don't come to the nightfall. 50% of it's true. Uh, a man caught a Noah Diamond from prison. The money don't come to the nightfall. The co defendant's the mule. Thanks. Came up in the rules now. Junkies gonna come on that white fall. We sit in the rules where even a broke nigga's worth a million or two. <laughs> Taking count my patent style, I'm actually round the realest. The, realest the multiplied them stacks around, I travel towns to get it. Hustling. Now add the house, take that amount, subtract out all my feelings. A hint of this, a dash of clout, exactly how That's I exactly did it. Exactly how I did it. Say goodnight, let's say hello again say to hello me. Again. It's Mr. Landlord Butch, y'all niggas owe some rent to me. I got a bipolar bitch, she like to roll a bit to me. Told me her other nigga richer, but no offense to me. None taken. What's the difference from me and Calipari? Cause Kentucky and Louisville, me and the feds got that kind of robbery. Gangsters out your posse be trying to dodge me. Vacationing from Abu Dhabi. Meditate on saying like I know karate. Yeah. My nigga Jones yeah. told me he don't want to rap. The money don't come to the fight that. Far. I said that hair wrong run we had ain't coming back. The money got some drug lord, humble nice. cat fall. Niggas who fumble packs got money under wraps. Uh, so they stumble back. The girl, he's going to come on that white fall. Tell him my husband told you that. What you did? Summertime. Peace, man. Appreciate y'all.